Well, despite the headlines that you just quoted, the fundamentals are very strong, right? And, and real estate's about demand and supply, and the rising uh, rates that you see is affecting the capital markets, but the operating fundamentals are extremely strong. The vacancy rate for newly built space in London is less than 2%. And so rents have been rising in the A market. I think there will be a bifurcation for sure. You're going to have a lot of secondhand space that's not sustainable space, it's not bringing outstanding, and that market, I think, will continue to be weak. That's, that's the overall picture for, for London. What, what about for Canary Wharf Group specifically? Because I know some of the banks have expressed um, the view that they may um, back away from their positions in, in uh, Canary Wharf. I mean, are you, are you finding that the financial sector is retreating somewhat from that location? No, in fact, opposite in terms of um, they're relooking at how they're using their space in a post-COVID world. But ERBD just moved in from the city. They moved in their headquarters. Citibank is reinvesting in their headquarter tower that they own. And Barclays is investing in new trading floors in their center. So overall, our vacancy rate um, is less than 7% on, on, our, on our state. Have you got any news on HSBC? I know there was a, uh, an internal memo apparently put out suggesting yeah. they were reviewing their position. What's the story? Um, I think they're evaluating their options again to kind of see what their, what their new space requirements are in a post-COVID world, how they want to work and how their culture is. And I think we'll be given the opportunity to kind of give them some alternatives as well. But I think, um, you know, they're a great customer and we'd love to have them stay. The headlines, newspapers stuffed with announcements about layoffs that are taking place globally. What's the lag time in terms of when this shows up in terms of decisions on downsizing uh, headquarters, downsizing office space? It really depends on each company and what their you know, lease expirations are and what their requirements are from a balance sheet point of view. I would add, though, that if you look at, and there was some good analysis done, the now number of layoffs that have been announced, it's a small fraction of what they've been hiring in the last four or five years. So, yeah, there's obviously um, jobs being lost, but in the scheme of the last four or five years, I think there was an over-exuberance of expansion of some of these tech jobs, but it's not a secular downturn. We've had a lot of the years in terms of how companies want to run their workforce. It felt as though the banks were a little bit more aggressive in wanting their staff to come back into the office to trading room floors, but you're still getting that pushback from some groups in the workforce that want the flexibility, they don't want to be in the office every single day of the week. What does that mean in terms of uh, some of the customers, clients that you're seeing? Is the flexibility still a big thing in terms of how they're running their workforce? It really depends company by company and culture by company. Um, we're very fortunate. We've got a lot of great companies that in the financial services um, and even in the, in the um, healthcare space, our traffic is at 19 levels during the week and 50% higher on the weekends in terms of that sustainable mixed use neighborhood that we've created. And so if you talk and see the Elizabeth line has been a huge game changer for Canary Wharf in terms of bringing that connectivity. And so we've expanded the number, number of bars and restaurants that we had. In 2019, we had uh, a little over 40. We're close to 70 right now. And that shows you the vibrancy and people are back. And I think whether it be you know, all of JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, Citibank, Barclays, they're back.